Take your, give us your discernment so that we may better understand your word and critically apply it to our lives. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right, so we're doing Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 14. That's all. I'll read it first for us. And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Awesome. Thank you, sir. All right. So, uh, as usual, we will kick off um, this part of our study with uh, our E3 method with the C section. Um, I've got the first three items up here, so we'll kick it off with, as usual, our repeated words and phrases. So um, whether it's significant or not, doesn't matter for this part, just is it repeated more than one time? We'll take note of it. So uh, look through the passage, um, or if you've already got your notes ready, uh, call it out to me and uh, tell me the word or phrase and tell me where you found it. Knowledge. Knowledge. Verse 9. Verse 10. Verse 10. And verse 10, don't get me wrong, that's it. Is that it? I, b- I believe it is, that's what I had. Okay. Kingdom. Okay, where did you find that? 12. Uh, oh, sorry, I have a, I, I, never mind. So I was wondering, this was interesting, when I was doing the study earlier this week, I was wondering if other translations might have when it was talking about the domain of darkness and transfer the kingdom i was wondering if other translations maybe had kingdom twice Mm -hmm. so that's why i I rolled with that because i was like oh maybe his translation has kingdom twice but uh, if it doesn't it technically isn't repeated unless we would like to stretch it a little bit and put domain we could i'm fine to do that because it's the same it's similar idea actually i'm i was i'm sorry i was right this was looking at the wrong word. Kingdom oh. is in 12, and it's also in 13. Okay. Is it, it's used in the same way, right? Yeah. Dom, it's, it's where I've got domain, you've got kingdom? Mm-hmm. Is that Actually, it? I have dominion in mind. Okay. Not domain, but right after that is the kingdom of the son he loves. Yeah, kingdom of the son he loves. That's right. That's right. Okay, so verse 13. Is yeah. What, what 12 and 13. 12 and 13. Okay. Okay. All right, I've got a weird one. Okay. Um, when it says we continually, we have not stopped, we have great endurance, I see all those the same, even though they're not the same word. Does that make sense? Yes, and I'm I'm I'll, I'm I'm in favor of that because I'm about to do the same thing with God because He shows up multiple times in this passage, but it's never exactly it's not the same way twice. Right. So I'm about to do the same thing. So call it out to me. Okay. So we have not stopped is in nine. Continually is also in right. nine. So, 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 yeah, sorry. So I, I got to think about how I want to write oh. this. So, so continually. Mm-hmm. Is in nine. Okay, what's the next one? Um, we have not stopped is also in nine. So I don't know how you want to write that. I'll, I'll write it all out. Okay. And then um, great endurance is in verse 11. But they're all different, but it's just like that, the idea of this continuance. This, the idea is the same. And for that exact same reason, I'm going to put, I'll, I'll write the, the names that I have in my translation. If y'all will look through yours while I write this out and call out the locations to me. So God, the Father, and then Lord, and then also the pronouns that are used, him, his, 
as well. I mean, it's almost every verse. It's mm -hmm. 12, fathers and 12, he, 13, his blood, 14. Mm -hmm. His glory is might. Eleven, um, yeah. Ten is him, fully pleasing him. At least in my translation, that's what it says. And nine good. is his. So it's practically every verse of the passage. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm gonna, yeah. So, I, what did I have? So, I, I had nine through, through thirteen. Mm -hmm. So, fourteen being the only exception. So, I'm gonna put nine through thirteen. And I'll just read, read out real quick. Just, this is ESV, so yours may be a little bit different. Yeah. So here, here's how mine, how I, when I was reading through, here's how I did it. Uh, so, and so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking you may be filled with the knowledge of all his will uh -huh. and all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a worthy manner of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, and for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints and light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. And that's the In 12, I also said, um, here it is, I put his holy people. Okay. Yours doesn't say My, that. Mine has it as who ha the father who has qualified you to share the inheritance of the saints in light. Okay. So so you have a, you have another one. Yeah, mine okay. says to share the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. Okay, his holy people. So yeah, so we get another pronoun reference right. there. Um the saints, which would be his saints. His saints so right. yeah. Okay. Uh, so so in other words, a bunch. And in, in the past, I've made the comment. You know, when we're looking through a passage, e even though not all the time a repeated word or phrase is necessarily the point, it is useful to identify what the author says, words or phrase he says the most. I think it goes without saying that we should definitely be paying attention to this if it's if he's referenced so many times throughout this passage. Not to dismiss any of these other things, but that that's clearly the the number one thing that's referenced the most times. Any others that we haven't talked about yet, or did we, or did you see one of these identified somewhere we missed? And if there's if it's a translation difference, I'd still want us to reference um, it. It's sort of like the. Uh with the continually, mm -hmm. it's kind of the same thing, just like the growing in, being strengthened, like, um... What's a verse? Uh, yes. So we're, you're wanting to add it under this under this, this one right here? We could. Okay, just could call it out to me. Um, like in verse 11, like being strengthened with all the power, uh, yeah, having great endurance, growing in knowledge, you know, just growing, strengthening, all that stuff. Okay. Okay. Strength, strengthened in all power is a repetition in the Greek. It's, it's actually, you could actually translate it as being made powerful with all power. Okay. And that, and in Greek that serves just as, a, as an emphasis, essentially, or, or is it just a quirk of how the language works? It, I, I'm asking that no. because, like in Hebrew, if a word is repeated like that, it's usually to to take it to the next level or something like that. It, it's it, it's not. I agree with you, but it's it's not that. He okay. just said power, and then a verb form of power. Okay. Um, so it's not quite the same as just repeating the word for emphasis. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Uh, if we've if we've tapped out on these, we'll move on to the next one, which is comparisons and contrasts. So in this text, does Paul give us any comparisons or contrasts? Does he compare ideas or subjects? Uh, does he contrast things one with another? Oh yeah. Oh, I already got it. All right. Give it to me. <laughs> All right. All right. Give it to me. The kingdom of light and the dominion or domain of darkness. Kingdom of Light. I'm not trying to draw that. And the domain of 
Darkness. And uh, what was the verse on that one? 12 and 13. Okay. All right, so Kingdom of Light and the Domain of Darkness. What else? So we would say this is a contrast, right? Mm-hmm. The yeah. kingdom and the and the domain of darkness, because mm-hmm. we have light and dark being contrasted. Any comparisons? We've got a we've got a repeat one from last the last section. Bearing fruit and growing. Yep. So we have uh, tree bearing fruit. Compared. What what is he compared to in verse ten in my translation? What does he compare the, the the bearing fruit to? Please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work. I don't know what work that that wit was, but it's work. Pleasing him in every good work. Please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work. So. Now in the last section. The uh, the bearing fruit we discussed was was to do with uh, the increase of the gospel, not just in the known world at the time, but also individually in this particular church. Right. Here it's a little bit different, um, whereas the the bearing of fruit is related to doing the pleasing God through every good work. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, one of those good works would be the increase of the gospel. Um, but I would also say this probably has to do with sanctification, uh, Christian service to, to others, things like that. All right, any others? All right, I've got one, it's a... I don't know if I would call it a stretch, but I would say in verse, at the beginning of verse 10, it says, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him. Then before that, talk about how they need to be filled with knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding so they can do that. Um, I, I just made the note, it says, he compares or uses the, he uses the, the language of walking and it's one type of phrase we use a lot, the Christian walk or your, your walk with God or path. something like that, the path, something like that. We, we use that a lot. So I'm, I just made the comment in my notes that he compares living out and growing in knowledge <laughs> and wisdom to... Any others, comparisons or contrasts that we haven't talked about yet? Or any other comments on the ones we've already listed? All right. Very good. So, so far we've got our repeated words and phrases where we talk about God the Father uh, and, and various forms of that the most. And then our comparisons and contrasts I would say the, the, the most clear and bold one is probably this one. Would you all agree with that? Yeah. The one that's the, the most direct contrast would be would be this one. And then the most direct comparison is, is this one. So I would say we want to keep our eyes on these. So just for our sake. So those. All right, commands and promises. So commands are somewhat self-explanatory. Uh, promises uh, sound a lot like truth claims, except there's a future time component to them, um, to, kind of, to kind of summarize that a little bit. So commands and promises we see here in the text. Well, I look at verse 9 when he says, We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that Spirit gives. That whole entire verse is that if you are... In the not in the in you growing in wisdom through the Spirit, He is going to show you His will. 
but now I'm rewriting the sentence. Uh, I think I know what you're what you're getting at. So I, from verse nine and then ten, I put that in as a command because he obviously wants them to walk in a manner worthy right. of the Lord. So while it's not, while he doesn't literally say you should walk in a, I mean the 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 implication seems pretty clear to me that they should be walking in, in a worthy manner of the Lord. Well, and I, I see it also kind of as a promise because if you are, he will show his will. Am I stretching there? Well, I don't think not. I don't think you're stretching that truth uh, at all. The only thing I would say uh, is we, we may want to debate whether that belongs here or in our truth claim section gotcha. that would follow. I got you. That absolutely is going to fall at least under one of those, 100%. The only debate is whether it's going to be here or the next section. So we have a command to walk in the manner worthy of the Lord, and that was verse 10. All right, and then what... Uh, so, so let's kind of talk about that one. Can you kind of uh, restate what you were getting at, Dawn? Or we can kind of, I'll make another column here for truth claims. Well, I know what I want to say. My brain doesn't know what I want to say. <laughs> um, that if you're growing in knowledge with the Spirit, His will will become apparent. Okay. Oh, fair. Yeah. Yeah. And and you I think you use the keyword. A lot of times what we're looking for and promises the word will. Yeah. Um, because that that is a future what a way of referencing the future. So in my book, I'm fine to put that on that, that truth under a promise. I think you could also just but as rightly put it under truth claim, but for, for our purposes we'll put it under here. So uh, would you kind of rephrase that one more time? I know, I'm going to make yeah. your brain do it again. Hold on, I think I got it. Okay, Devin, uh, you, cut down a break. <laughs> if you listen to the Spirit, you will you will understand God's will. Okay. And by listen to the Spirit, we're kind of referencing the idea of being of uh, being filled with the knowledge of His, of His will with all spiritual wisdom. Yes. Yeah. Right? Okay. Mm-hmm. When you look at 10 and 11 and 12, where you've got those strong verbs, I really need to be quiet so the rest of y'all can talk. It's <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, please him in every good way so that you will be growing in the knowledge. And then 11 says, being strengthened with all power. And 12, and giving joyful thanks. And he's qualified you to share. And those are, I guess they're all truth claims. Never mind, I'll be quiet. That's okay. Like I said, there's a reason why um, when we're in the practicum, there's so much discussion about about how to address those. It can be tricky sometimes, for sure. Um, I got another command here related to the walk in manner with the Lord. Um, and we, we also just talked about it, where, over here with the tree bearing fruit. So in, in alignment with this command to walk in a word, manner worthy of the Lord, we should also be bearing fruit, right? All right. What are some other ones? And if, if we need to... Well, and that, that's kind of where I was going, is if you look at the bearing of good fruit, growing in the knowledge, I mean, to me, I could see that as a command. Yeah, it's what this, they should be doing. And you're doing this. Yeah. That's why I'm saying those strong ver- verbs of action. Yeah, so, and, and they're connected. So uh, if you're to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, you will be listening to the Spirit to be able to understand God's will, which will also lead to you bearing fruit and increasing the knowledge of God. All right, 
What else? She already said it, but in verse 12 it says, give thanks to the Lord, or to the Father. As a command. Yes. All right. Any others? Verse 13. Would you consider that a promise? I know it's a truth claim, but he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love. Would you consider that a promise or not a truth claim? But we'll put that as truth claim, claim because of the because of the past tense has. That's why I would, I would. That's where I would make the distinction. Gotcha. But what about fourteen, where it says we have redemption? Same. Same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same. Present. Present, present tense. tense. So past and present tense were, were generally speaking. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say that present and past tense could never be a promise right. because I, I don't know. I don't know the Bible enough <laughs> to be able to say that with complete confidence. But broadly speaking, past and present tense is almost likely gonna be a truth claim. If we find the word will, then we know we've, we've... You've almost, yeah, if you find the word will, you've almost certainly identified a promise. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else under commands and promises? I mean, for the sake of completeness, I would say um, the being strengthened all power. Be- bearing fruit is basically the, is closest to the command. And then he gives three illustrations of what it looks like to bear fruit, increasing knowledge, bear, uh, being strengthened in all power, and giving thanks to the Father. Okay, so we want me to kind of like link these: bearing fruit, increase in knowledge, and give give thanks. Can we do it like link these together? I, I yeah, they're increasing knowledge. Then there's being strengthened in all power. Like you do this, and they will lead to these. Verse things. eleven. So it's sort it's of. Like an umbrella. Yeah. Yeah, it's so like here's what I want you, you to do. Intention. In case you don't know what that looks like, it looks Your like these three the, things. Yeah, so it's kind right. of a promise in a way where it's just like this is so what you're going to lead. So bearing fruit, you do this, you're like that would be your like, one. These will happen. And then yeah. A, B, and C would be increase, give, and being. So the being strengthened is this, verse 11. Outlined. And increase in knowledge, it's a word. give thanks, yeah. giving thanks, yeah. and being strengthened are examples of bearing fruit. So they are all of you. Bearing fruit is the header. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then we're going to call being strengthened command because that's what yeah. they should be. Yeah. Right? Okay. And then if you do all that, if the promise is that you're going to be in there with the saints of the light or his holy people. Right. Yeah. So that that's part of like you're that's I think I think I'm I'm just gonna let me know if I'm if I'm putting words in your mouth. What I think you're saying is these things will identify you as someone who is it's, part of part of those people? Yes. Okay. And that would be the promise that you would be part of the saints of the light. Okay. So I'll put another arrow. Uh, say uh, maybe inclusion among the saints or something like that? Does that be yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. Now, ju- just, just because, just so that I can say it, you know, bearing fruit or, or doing good stuff, I mean, I, I, I would like to believe we all know this, but I'm just going to say it just because like, you never know. Um, doing good stuff does not get you into heaven. The faith in Christ Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins, for his atoning death on the cross is what is what does that. You are saved by grace, not works. Exactly. So just, just so we're clear. But the, the point that I, I believe Zach's trying to make, all these things are going to identify you as a member of this body. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. And uh, that would, we would call that what verse? Verse 14. Saints in the light, or in some people's translations. Oh yeah, I guess it depends on the translation. I have saints in the light in verse 12. Yeah. yeah. That, that's just where the ESV has. Some people also had his holy people, so you could do one of the two. 12. Oh. I'll put 12 or 13. So because I think I think Andrews maybe had it differently, but twelve or thirteen will work. Okay. Any others or any other comments we want to make about these? All right. This was a really good discussion. This is this these this bit is probably the trickiest part of uh, of this section.
But they can be both, right? Um, a, a promise and a truth claim? Well, we would, I mean, in basic terms, we would we would affirm that anything that Scripture says is also a truth claim because, okay. of, right. because of what we believe about the Bible and what it is. Um, but in... I think the idea when they were putting together the study plan is that the promise is something that we're looking forward to, whereas this is something we, we see now. I, I, that's, and I think that's why they include the language about time and the, and the discussion, just to help differentiate that. Okay, so if we've got nothing here, we'll do our truth claims. Anything that, anything that Paul writes here that is a truth claim. We have <coughs> We have redemption and the forgiveness of our sins. First All right, so I completely agree. Uh, I'm sorry, so we have redemption through our sin, through the forgiveness of our sins in verse 14. Verse 13, he has delivered us from darkness and obeyed us into the kingdom. Okay. What else? I put um, the that the Father who qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. I put that as a truth claim because it's God is where we get that, not in and of ourselves. Right. That's good. Absolutely. All right. Any others? <coughs> it's a simple one, but in verse uh, 9, uh, Paul says, We have not ceased to pray for you. It's a statement, but I mean, you'd want them to believe that it's true. You could also, we might get into this more into the um, respond or the understand section about the implications from Paul saying that he's not, they've not ceased to pray. What that means for, for the original audience and for us. Any other truth claims in the section? Why would you put that last one under a truth claim? Well, we have not ceased to pray. Is, is it true? Is it a, it's a declarative statement. Okay. Which can, like which can be a declarative statement true or false. Statement. Yeah. You're I right. can say. If they're lying, they have problems. <laughs> right? Is that a truth claim? Is it blue? <laughs> I'm saying <laughs> Actually, it's but, not, but we don't need to get into that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, uh, that's why I ask. I mean, there there is a difference in, in a fundamental difference as, as we're looking at this about something that is a truth claim, which is saying it's like uh, you you may not recognize this, but I, I I'm going to state this in a way that sounds like a fact so that you will know it. Um, and stating things that are simply true. Jesus died on the cross. That's that that's not a truth claim. It's a fact of history. And I so I separate the two. I, I wouldn't include that as a truth claim. He wants them to know it for sure. But it's not a claim of truth, like ultimate truth. If that so uh, like a theological truth claim? Yeah. Yeah. In in the past, we were encouraged that any any claim that would be like that would would make the list. The okay. significance of it would vary. Okay. Obviously. Sure. Because obviously, I'm not gonna. I would I would not equate <laughs> the importance of this with that. Right. Yeah. I, I would not do that. There's like a distinction between like big T truth claim and yeah. little T yeah. truth. Yeah, in the past we we were encouraged that if anything. it's if anything would anything. any pretty much anything would qualify that. Like like in the past, I think we've actually literally put Jesus down on the cross. Like we that have. that in previous in previous 
uh, books that 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 makes the list um, and like the practical and stuff like that. They may have changed how they look at that, and that's fine. But I would certainly agree we're not going to equate <laughs> the the value of this truth claim with the value of that truth claim. No, I, I certainly understand that. <clears throat> All right, if that's it, I believe we can move on to the next section. So. We've got our repeated words and phrases over here. Over there, we're going to look at our significant words and phrases, um, which I think is probably a little more thorough than this one because there wasn't. Again, we, we kind of stretched the the repeated words and phrases, and we we kind of agreed on that up front because um, te technically speaking, this is these are not all the same, but they are the same idea, so we included them in the same thing here. Technically, <clears throat> technically, this is not the exact same, but this is the same idea, so we included it. Significant words and phrases uh, might be a little bit longer in this in this session. Um, so, will someone in the center? You got it. Yeah. Already got it. Nope. Oh, okay. <laughs> not that quick. Well, well, no, no. I just want to make sure. I, 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 I didn't want to. Well, you, I don't know. You might have been more on the ball than I was. You, you might have already hard? snapped it. They're hard to see. Yeah, I, we got. I don't know what. They're the, like distorted. I, I just don't. I don't know what the. Solution for that is exactly. We need a high Shut quality up. phone. Camera. I think it's I think it's Groovy. I don't phone. think it's the phone. Oh really? Okay. You think it's what? Yeah. What's I think the sometimes. Like, like when Amanda's on our side, they never yeah, come through great. Yeah, yeah, they don't. It like it like almost like compresses it, them, so they're like bad makes quality. Makes a lot of mm -hmm. Yeah. I think sometimes it's group me, not necessarily the phone. I think too when you have like different types of phones, like Android and iPhones. I'm going to send it out group me and y'all tell me the quality of it. Okay. Well, we can't go back and take another one, so. Well, quality. I mean. I do, I do, I do. Reverse, reverse. I went, man, if life had that phone. Yeah, right. Then you have to watch it. Yeah. Yeah, if life had that button, man, that'd be pretty wild. I don't know, like, one of the ones from the window sheet. All right. Uh, or maybe that's what I'm thinking of. <coughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot. The blue doesn't look it's, like it's it. Decent. It's decent. It looked, didn't learn my lesson the last time. It's decent. I've just got to zoom in on it. The teacher in me is, like, screaming. No, it looks good. What did you say? I said the teacher in me is, like, screaming that he just left the markers unkept and, like, Oh, yeah, a little bit too, but. Yeah, it's good. Did you see one? She takes It's not as icy as you think. Your claws have like all the words and phrases. Call them out to me, and then we'll we'll get the reference. We'll make our list. Okay. I agree. Uh, let's merge Kingdom of Light and <clears throat> Inheritance of the Saints. All right. What other significant words or phrases? Redemption through his blood. Fourteen. Do we need to get verses on this one? Uh, if you, if yeah, we can certainly do that. Okay, so the top one is 13, 12 and 13. All right, and the redemption through his blood. 14. 14. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, good. I'd rather, yeah. I'd definitely rather have it. Did you, Andrew, did you have more on, uh, on this one that I needed to do? No, not yet. Okay. Not yet. I'm gonna wait for this one. All right. Qualified you to share in the inheritance, which I think goes with his, what you've got on number one, too. I like the qualification through Christ. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's fine for them to be separated because they're two, the ideas are different. So, like, what, what, like, talking about what is the kingdom of light, what is the inheritance of saints versus the importance of being qualified.
Okay. Ten. He may walk worthy of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Fully pleased. Him. I love that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Worthy of the Lord. That's so good. Nine, filled with the knowledge of his will. In verse 13, he says delivered, and he says transferred. And the idea that they're both like past tense, like it's already been done. God has already done that for us. Yes. Kayla, will you read yours for me? Is that 14? That's 13. Okay. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. What version is that? ESV. Would you read it? NIV. <laughs> the one they don't like. <laughs> Together, it's, together. Hey, look, um, it's so it's so funny how that happens. When I was growing up, NIV was NIV the stuff. Was it was, it was uh, everybody had to have in the two thousand in the early two thousands. <laughs> you go to Barnes and Noble and like most of their Bibles are NIV. Yeah. Because yeah. <clears throat> the ESV is relative, relatively new, like yeah. in terms of the grand timeline of yeah. Bible translations, it's relatively new. Yeah. And yeah, Andrew's rocking the authorized version. Okay. King James. Right? Old <laughs> <laughs> Somehow the old school is the best school. Yeah, yeah. I read something the other day that apparently even when it was written, the King James was using outdated English, uh-huh. which yeah. is a fascinating <laughs> idea. Like the original King James version. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. true. That so even the people that it was written for couldn't read it? Yeah, it <laughs> I'm sure they could read it, but Sorry. it would have sounded old to them the same way that it sounds old to us. Right. Mm-hmm. So, but, but why would they do that? Authority. Authority. I, Sounds, I mean, nice. I think when you go back, when we. That idea. It, 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 it's, 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 it's. To my mind, it's a, the idea that scripture is so set apart that it should sound a little otherworldly to us. It Does that make elo- sense? Eloquent and not in the words of the layman, I suppose. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah. that kind of gets into like Catholic thinking. Yeah. Well, but you, you kind of get like like it, I, there's, I there's certain. Is, is, is they're trying to distinguish, distinguish it from the rest of the literature of the day is what they're trying to do. Whether that's a good thing or not, yeah. You know, because to your point, like we want everyone to be able to read it. Yeah. Um, you know, so. There's, there should be a, a balance because, like the ESV, you know, if you hand the ESV to someone who's never read any scripture before, there might be some phrases in there that are hard for them to like. Like, what do you mean by that exactly? Whereas other translations might make those ideas uh, much simpler in the language of, of our current day. But how you straddle that line is not as well above my pay grade. Well, the great thing is we know that the Word of God speaks to everyone. So. Yes. No matter what translation you go with. Okay. That was a fun rabbit hole. Uh, other significant words and phrases from uh, from our, our text. Spiritual wisdom and understanding. put increasing in the knowledge of God. Um, I like this one particularly because this is part of why we are here. All right, any others we haven't uh, we haven't talked about yet? Great endurance and patience. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Uh, there's another aspect of that. What would that say? Yes. For all endurance and patience with joy. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take your name and add with joy because I think that's an important aspect of it too. Any others? That was a good catch. I didn't put that one in my notes. <laughs> Any others? Okay. So based on what we've already talked about so far, we're starting to run low on time. Based on what we've talked about so far, of these, would we pick out a few in particular uh, as, as maybe the most significant of our significant phrases? I know it's hard sometimes to chop all these wonderful statements and phrases up, but if we had to, what would we say were probably the most critical to this passage? Kingdom of life. Oh, oh, sorry. Too many. <laughs> two voices at once. <laughs> and you pointed to each other at the same time. Too. Oh, that wasn't me. That was Zach. Oh, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. Zach, go ahead. Zach, Kingdom of life. Kingdom of life. Okay. Uh, give, me your, give me your reasoning on that. It's what we're promised one day if we bear the fruit if we have patience and endurance, or we're filled with the Spirit. I like it. Thank you. All right, and Devin? Redemption through his blood. Okay. Yeah. Same question. Give me your your reasoning behind it. Why, why, why that one? Because we wouldn't be here, and we would be nothing without it. Yeah, we're not, we're not getting here without that, right? Yeah. All right. He includes the two references with filled with the knowledge of his will and increasing in the knowledge of God. In the, and it's important because we need to be filled with what God says mm -hmm. and his truth, not filled with the knowledge of the world. That's right. Mm. And I, and I, I would have gone with walk, so right above your first circle. Walk because, in because that is... That's the result he wants. That's true. Yeah, of being filled with the so and increasing. You, we, you could keep those and just link that together because it's those two things together with this result. Okay. Filled and increasing. Okay. I, I like that. Okay. It's basically all of them. I know. And that's the challenge. That's the challenge, the challenge is to just not circle every single one. Because then I once you get the Paul, I mean, it's hard to <laughs> <laughs> the whole letter. It's going to be full of all but, the good. I things. mean, also, like if we kind of, if we go back to the overview, right? Zoom out. His his point is going to ultimately be. Christ is better than anything else you could ever possibly compare him to. So now walk this way. That, that's that's like the big picture, and so it's not a surprise that he's making that emphasis here. Yeah, and we're you know what, when we conclude this passage, he's gonna launch into. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's not exactly a, a, a spoiler. Uh, if you've got a Bible that has the uh, the header subjects, the next section is literally called the preeminence of Christ. Mm -hmm. So he's not about to be subtle with his with his <laughs> thesis. Um, so thank you, Andy. That's a great point. Yeah, and that's something that's hard to do, hard to remember because sometimes we get so into like the individual passage we forget to zoom back out and remember like, all right, what are we talking about here? What's his, what's his overall message? What's his overall thesis that he's going to be presenting to us? And that, that that's a good example of why that's why that's helpful. Okay, all right, done that. All right, significant words and phrases. And the last thing in our C section is literary features. Um, Again, a little light compared to some of the other books that we've done. Uh, but any literary features anyone spy spy out? The bearing fruit is a metaphor. What was it you were saying about conditional statements, Matt? Oh, oh. so like the relationship on like, uh, like in verse 10 and 11 on like walk in a manner worthy and you'll be strengthened with all power. Is that is that a conditional statement? Like, if you walk this way, you'll be strengthened by God? The, so, 
So you're saying that, that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy? Like the verse 10 and 11. So like, walk in a manner worthy of God, bearing fruit, increasing in knowledge, being strengthened with all power. Like if you do these things, you'll be strengthened with all power. Is that conditional? Like that power is... I don't think so. You don't think yeah, so? Yeah, I'm, I'm leaning the same way, but I'm not sure I can put it into words yet. So Go ahead. The, the reason why I don't think so is that it, it, it's what I said before. So um, he he has this one thing that he wants. You're going to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, pleasing him. And it's going to look like this. And those the look like this is three partic- participial phrases. Um, and they are, um, that's, that is one of them. Um, bearing fruit, being strengthened, and giving thanks. So it, it's not really conditional, but it is like, here's what it should look like. It has these three parts. And so I, I actually think that that specific structure <laughs> of having the participial phrases is a literary feature because he's trying to tie those things together into one big bow. It's like a little four-year-old daughter of somebody walking in with that big bow on their head and like, look how precious. <laughs> All right, so three parts that we said that was bearing fruit, being strengthened, and giving thanks, right? Well, I'll keep the metaphor because that is, I mean, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, but we'll we will also reference it here. Uh, being yeah, bearing fruit, being being strengthened, and giving thanks. Okay. And they're written like the it's. The, the language is all very pa- parallel, so he's he is using the language in a very specific way to show that these are things that are interrelated. Okay. All right. Any other literary features? Imagery. Imagery. Okay. In in what way? Well, uh, the kingdom of light, which is being equated to heaven, paradise. Then we have the domain of darkness, which is sin. You know weren't literally in the dark, but you were blind. Okay, so imagery. Yeah. So you're saying the domain of darkness was imagery for what? Like I guess sin, hell, you know, being being blind, but now you can see. I'll put lost. Lost. So okay. There you go. That oh. encompasses a lot of those yeah. ideas. Okay. Um, would we? I'm not going to be that mad if someone disagrees. The when when he says we have not ceased to pray for you, is that a little bit of maybe hyperbole? Because I'm sure he literally did other things besides pray for just those people <laughs> 24 hours. <laughs> A little bit, yeah. a little bit, a little, little hyperbole. The idea, though, is that oh, the they are praying for them, that they are the way you're looking at the way he's trying to use it. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm sure he's just he's communicating. The idea he's trying to communicate is that he is, they are on his mind, he cares for them. Yeah. Well, I'm doing it three times, a, three times a day for for a month it means I haven't stopped. I, I've, I've kept up with my habit. Yeah. He did it a lot. Like I said, like I said, I'm not gonna be mad if someone disagrees with that idea, but I, I was, I was looking for some literary features. So like, well, you know, he, he's not literally. Literally, not praying twenty four hours a day. Breathing. Yeah. Yeah. He, he doesn't need to breathe. <laughs> and, he eats, and he probably needs to preach every now and again too. So. Eat. But Maybe yeah. you just assume. We can leave that off then. Maybe not, you're assuming. No, go ahead. I think it's how fair. the word's supposed to work. Yeah. Maybe we're gonna take thoughts and ideas. Like my car has been running for the past four years. It doesn't mean the key's been in the ignition for four years. How are we on time? Uh, y'all, some people, folks need to go to service, right? Are you close to that? Uh, 10, 10.43, is that what I got? Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
All right, so that this is kind of an ideal place. That wraps up our C section. So next week we can move on to understand. So I feel like this is a pretty good place to, to close it out.